we have this gentleman for uh, phacoemulsification. As you can see, there's a little bit of cortical opacity anteriorly there with a little uh, fibrosis in that edge. Yes. And then there is a posterior capsule opacification. So this is a reasonably soft cataract. When you do go in, keep the blade not tilted like that, but almost horizontal and press down a little bit before initiation of the, and gently push the blade through until you come up to the mark. And once you reach that mark, then you depress it down a little bit and then smoothly enter. Now the next step here is because this is topical, we need to make sure that we get a little bit of lignocaine in. So I'm just going to inject a little bit and then I'm going to use the vision blue. Now we can use air to make sure that the stain is more, but usually that is, I don't use that. I just wash it off almost immediately with uh, the lignocaine itself. And then I'm going to inject the uh, viscoelastic and that's the viscoelastic going in. So that's viscoat. Now this is the sideboard incision. Again, it's very controlled and uh, go there. Then we are going to do another one. And so we're going in gently. I'm going to make a slight depression. Can see that depression nicely. And then I'm going to lift up a small flap. Once I do that, I'm going to start tearing this. It is always easy to follow the margin of the pupil when doing the rexis. In that way, it is easier, it becomes easier to size it and also to get a central rexis. So it is very controlled, slow, grasp and regrasp, pick it up again without trying to do and make sure the anterior chamber is deep. If the anterior chamber depth is reduced for any reason, then you need to go in and deepen it before proceeding with the rexis. Otherwise, there is a risk of runoff. So go in, depress, go under the anterior capsule and gently inject and you can see the fluid wave slowly traveling right across. Once that is done, test to see whether the rotation is there. If not, the procedure may have to be repeated. So just going to repeat this again on this side as well. Now it is free and it is rotatable. I'm going to start the FACO and then I go into foot pedal position one and I'm just going to go in very gently. You can see I'm having the tip turn sideways. And then I'm just going to remove some of the viscoelastic to enable flow to occur because if there is no flow, it's going to heat up and you can get an incisional burn. So this is a fairly soft cataract. And let me see whether I can get the, yes, it is possible to crack this nucleus. So I'm just going to crack it into two. So I can see the posterior capsule now. So we are in quadrant now, and the vacuum is more, so I'm just going to hold it, 
and then I'm going to grasp it and pull it towards the center. Make sure when you tumble the quadrant, not to allow it to touch the corneal endothelium. Very important, so very controlled. I usually use the second instrument above the quadrant to make sure that it doesn't come up and hit the endothelium. So you can see that still, I tumbled it, but I'm still controlling it. I'm keeping that as for long as possible, the subincisional quadrant. You can go through cases very fast, but still the patient safety is paramount and each step has to be done very purposefully. So it is possible to use very low levels of energy dissipated. So there are advantages of keeping the uh, amount of energy that is uh, expended, the cumulative dissipated energy levels low. So I'm using uh, bimanual again, like all my cases, and I'm going with the infusion first, make sure that the anterior chamber is uh, deep because otherwise it is possible to uh, cause a decimase tear, which I was talking about, decimase detachment. And uh, if you do get a decimase de detachment, the main thing is to recognize it early. So again, cortical removal in a radial fashion. Grasp the anterior skirt rather than the posterior one, and then pull towards the center. So if there is a little uh, dense cortical matter, you just nudge it in with the second instrument. So the advantage of bimanual is that you can really put, place the uh, second incision sites at very comfortable positions because the instruments are curved and any part of the subincisional area is totally accessible. So I'm just going to start uh, doing that last part, which is removal of the cortex for which I have switched hands. You have to be very careful here. You can see that the posterior capsule, there is, it's bulging up. It has a convex upwards. So very, very important. You have to be extremely careful when polishing it because the vitreous pressure is a little bit on the high side. So I'm going to leave that and change hands again. There's a little bit of cortical matter there which I need to deal with. Okay, the rest I'm going to deal after I get the lens in. So this is uh, Provis, this is to inject the lens. Again, I'm very careful. I'm just going to start injecting before I really enter the anterior chamber to open up the lips of the incision. And then I'm going in and I'm going to inject into the bag, open up the bag very nicely. There's the lens, again, lift the superior lip upwards and then start gently injecting it. Tilt the lens downwards as it goes in, so then it goes directly into the bag and you can just push it down. Take the viscoelastic out. I'm just going under the lip and trying to clean up a little bit on this side. Okay, so the anterior capsule, I think, uh, it's not a step that a lot of people do, but I like to do this routinely. So I clean up a little bit or as much as possible. So this patient, you can see, has a little bit of fibrosis for whatever reason. Okay, so that's a little tricky because the uh, 
with chest pressure is a little high in this patient. I'm just going to leave the haptic here because uh, if there's fibrosis progresses during later on, it can cause a shift of the lens. So the haptic will give some protection. I'm just going to tuck it in under that area of fibrosis and then keep it like that. I'm going to reduce the pressure by loosening up the speculum so that the pressure on the eye itself is reduced. And you can see that when I do that, the uh, anterior chamber forms very well. This, I need to nudge that lens back into position, so which I will do. You can see we got nice uh, cover. I'm just going to uh, seal the wounds, just test its integrity and then close up.